Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to have a look at the release of Pop OS 2104. Now, there's a lot in this release that merely improves your usage if you're on a trackpad or like this new keyboard I have has a trackpad and a keyboard and I got that for uh, ran managing the media PC. I, I actually consequently hate trackpads, but uh, there's times it makes sense. And uh, if you are using a laptop or a keyboard like this, it does make sense to do some of the things that they, that they did as far as the changes. They also did a few other alterations to the desktop, a few things that I'm really pleased to see them do. Uh, one of those is I can't remember for sure if they defaulted to turning on location and you had to toggle it off when you first started. But I did notice this time it's defaulted off and it doesn't even check your location approximation based on your IP address. You either have to turn on location services prior to selecting your time zone or you have to manually check it. These are excellent, excellent things for privacy. But let's go ahead and first look at the release announcements. So this is the Cosmic and uh, it is a release of cosmic proportions. <laughs> That's very good. So first they talked about the workflow. This is where a whole lot of improvements have been made for trackpads. So Pop OS has always been good at managing the keyboard or the mouse and adding the trackpad supports and gestures is a really good uh, movement in the direction. And I think some of this is probably coming from the newer version of GNOME did that as well. But of course, they've always done some extra things based on user feedback and stuff like that. One of these is in the workflow, you have the option here and what this picture is showing you is you have the option to start up your system with no dock at all to run your dock edge to edge or to run a dock in the middle floating. And so that actually is a very nice option. Now, of course, the new version of GNOME, it doesn't land you on the desktop. It lands you on the application screen, which I thought was on paper, it looked really weird. And then when I actually booted up a Fedora with it, I was like, okay, this actually does make sense because there's nothing else to do on the desktop. You always invariably have to start up the application menu to find an application. So that started you there. This one still lands you on the desktop, but you now you have an option of a dock pre-established so that you may not needing be needing to go into there. Also, you have the option, I'm not sure if it's in here or not, but your meta key now, instead of pulling up the all applications menu, instead just pulls up a search menu. And there is an option in the original setup where you can toggle that to have different options. So here's a keyboard shortcut. So here is, here it is. Uh, by default, it's going to start the launcher. That's what we see in this picture here. Basically, it's just a launcher key over the center of your desktop. You can just start typing in, and then you can quickly uh, use your mouse or your keyboard to select the application that you want to use. You can set it to launch up a variety of different things as well. So you can do that application menu if you want, and those are options that they give you. Again, trackpad gestures, Swipe four fingers to the right, uh, to the left, um, up or down to first workplace switches. So those of you using trackpads, laptops, and things, this is going to be a huge improvement on productivity. They do have some information. Um, the 20.10 20, uh, 20 reaches end of life in July, so you are going to want to upgrade to the 2104 before next month. And, uh, or I guess by the, t by the end of this month, I think this came out end of June. We are just having a look at it now. You also have some options, new options in settings, which are going to give you some options for, um, OS upgrades and recovery menus, a few other things. They've really done a lot just to, to make everything work. And so with that, let's go ahead and boot on into the computer and have a look at what it looks like. So here we are on our login screen, and uh, we're just gonna start in with clicking our option here. We don't seem to have any other options as far as going to Wayland or, any, or, or X or anything else, and I believe the default is going to be Wayland. So if you are needing X, eh, you might be a little out of luck with Pop! OS right now. Maybe you can install it, I, I just don't know for sure. Now this is of course the default desktop, and uh, we did select all the main defaults. Location was disabled. I had to select my, uh, I had to select my uh, time zone manually. We had the option for where the dock is. I went with the default, which is the edge-to-edge -edge dock down here. 
So here is the launcher. So this is the same launcher that you get with pushing the meta key. We also have the workspaces tag and we have the show applications tag. So the workplaces and the applications tag are now on uh, separate, separate views. So that might be good. That might be bad for you. It just kind of depends. And um, when we get back to the main desktop there, let's have a look at what our workplaces can do. Let's uh, boot up Firefox on one. We'll boot up um, we'll boot up files in a terminal on the other, and then we'll just kind of have a look at uh, what we are going to see here. So there is Firefox. I'm not seeing the workspace switchers using the same exact keys. There we are, we have some update notifications. So we have a pop-up notification and we have a number indication on the pop shop. Let's see. Yeah, it does appear as though the uh, shortcuts for switching workspaces have been changed from GNOME. So I'd have to check the documentation to see exactly what they are. You used to just use your alt control and your, um, uh, and your arrows to switch desktops. I'm not seeing that as, as an option now. So uh, we'll have to check the documentation on how to switch our workspaces around. So if you are used to, used to GNOME, then you might have some issues with uh, figuring out where your new workspaces are at. But uh, that's certainly okay. The pop store down here is giving us this notification. It's telling us that there are some updates. So head on over to the install that sees what the updates are. You can see there's a few different options here. And if we click on this guy here, it's going to give us a list of everything that it's intending to update. So we're not going to go ahead and push the updates right now, but that's how easy it is. Notification here, pop-up notification as well. So there's where we have it. Now, of course, the other thing that Pop! OS has that they've been working on good improvement on is to have a, uh, to have a form of um, uh, window management options instead. So you can come up here to your option up here and you can go ahead and uh, hit your tile windows button and it's gonna automatically turn this guy into a tile system. Now, there is very clear documentation as to um, how to switch your your various uh, menus around uh, you can do all of the all of the different uh, different options there and I believe they actually have right here is the shortcuts so shortcuts super key is the launcher you can navigate windows with the uh, the super and arrow keys and you can toggle the tiling with super and Y so if I do uh, super I do super and Y that turns on and turns off our tiling Super and the arrow keys to navigate windows. So there we are. There's how we navigate windows. Very nice. And there's actually more documentation than just those very simple ones. But it's very nice to see those tools over here. You can show tiled window titles. You can show active hints. And then here's your colors. And then you can decide what your gapping is between your individual windows. So you can do all sorts of fun setup there. So let's just switch between different windows there, and there we have it. So um, that is a, a very nice option there for people who do want to switch, particularly between tiled and non-tiled. Very nice options that Pop! OS has by default. Let's have a look at the default applications that we get. Here's your calculator, calendar, contacts, files, uh, Firefox. We have Geary. We have the Office Suite, Inside Zone Folder, Pop Shop Settings, System tools, system monitors, disks, usage, passwords, and such. Really not a lot else. USB flasher, that's nice. Always good to have one of those. So you can see it's not an overly bloated system. It has just enough system tools to feel complete, but not an overwhelming amount. And so here we can uh, just have a look. Let's see what we have as far as this guy here. So you can see we have the option to do a flat pack or the deb package of Steam. So we have very nice options inside the store there. Let's look at what Caden Live is going to look like. So here we have flat pack or we have the, uh, the deb package. So very nice options. Uh, you can see it does not do snaps by default. It does not uh, take the Linux Mint approach and block them by default. It just doesn't have them set up in, um, in the repositories to start. So there you have it. 
that's pretty good. Inside of your settings panel, it's going to be your basic GNOME settings with a few other options that they have thrown into here. So here is your uh, super key action. So if you do want to change that later, you can change it between the launcher. Uh, pressing super key opens the Windows and Workspace overview, and then there's the applications. You can turn on or turn off hot corners. You can look at what the center bars are, window controls. Here's your backgrounds. Appearance, you have a light mode and a dark mode. Here's your dock. You can enable it, and then you can extend it to the edge, show the launcher dock. So there's a lot of different nice settings that we have. Here's your workspaces, number of them spans and where the placements of them happen to be notifications applications online accounts these are all fairly uh fairly standard things i believe that uh, pop os also has the firmware so this is an extra tool to help you with managing any hardware applications of course pop os uh, from system 76 which does have some custom firmware devices in some of their applications for better security and privacy and then over here, here's your OS upgrade and recovery options. So you're running the most recent version. Now this is uh, this is not going to run system updates, which are in the Pop Shop. This is actually going to be running. Um, uh, this is going to be running inside of your um, uh, just checking for for updates. So if you're on 2010 and you want to upgrade to 2104, this is where you're going to find it. So there's the the options that you have inside of Pop OS. Overall, I think that um, Pop! OS is a, uh, is a very nice system. And uh, it is certainly one that is worth looking at. Now, by default, they are using this highly customized GNOME. They are really making it their own. If you do not like GNOME and you still want to use Pop! OS, they do have clear documentation on their website for installing any other desktop environment. They do not make it difficult. They make it very easy to do. So Pop! OS overall, they are really a, a good up and coming distribution that has every possibility potential and probably already is playing with the same level as, as your Ubuntu, as your Linux Mint, so although it is a, down, um, a downstream derivative of Ubuntu. So with that being said, though, definitely check out Pop! OS 2104. If you are still running Pop! OS 2010, you are going to want to upgrade soon. Uh, the end of, end of July, end of this month, is the end of life of 20.10. So make sure that you are getting things updated by then. And as always, make good backups before you push your updates. You don't want to lose anything in the event something goes wrong. So there is Pop! OS. Thank you for watching. Let me know uh, your thoughts on this distribution in the comments down below, and we will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.